Outside an ominous stone building in China's capital, five words are written in chalk. There are no ghosts here. The message, which feels like a warning, is presumably there to discourage looky-loos and paranormal tourists. But the hundreds of daily visitors don't seem to believe these chalk words, but rather see them as an invitation. Today on Scream to Screen, we spirit you off to the ancient walled city of Beijing, China, home to emperors and to the Chaune Church, the most haunted place in the People's Republic of China. But before we plunge into the shadows, make sure you subscribe to Graveyard Shift and let us know in the comments which true life horror stories you'd like us to cover in the future. In 1045 BC, the walled city we now know as Beijing became the capital of a newly unified China. But humans have lived in the area for more than 250,000 years. And with such a long and violent history, there are bound to be ghosts. And in fact, Beijing has many locations considered haunted. People found guilty of treason were brought to the Kaishiku execution grounds for brutal interrogation and Ling Chi, the death by a thousand cuts. Supposedly, if you throw a stone into the courtyard of the city's opera house, a disembodied voice scolds you for your bad behavior. And the iconic General Yuan supposedly wanders his tomb, eternally dedicated to protecting the Ming Dynasty. But it is the Chaune Church that seems to haunt the imaginations of the people of Beijing the most. No one knows when or why the church was built. Records prior to the 1949 establishment of the People's Republic of China are missing or conflicting. It is believed to have been built as a school to teach Mandarin to Western missionaries in 1910. China in 1910 was in conflict. The Qing Dynasty was crumbling. And in a year, the Republic of China would take its place. Reaching out to foreigners, including building them schools, was part of the transition. But the Chaune Church, also known as Chaune 81, would find death within its walls. The Catholic Church owned the property for a time, using it as a church, a mission, and during World War II as a hospital. Again, records are spotty as to what was actually happening during these years. Is it possible that broken records and the approaching suicide have a more demonic origin? There are stories of houses built on lands that possessed a supernatural entity for eons, one that exposed generation upon generation to terror. Was the Chaune Church built on such a site? Were historical records expunged because of Communist Party efforts to erase the past, or did a spirit from beyond want them gone? In 1949, a high-ranking government official and his wife lived in the mansion. No longer a church, the property was beautiful, with greenery carefully manicured and a fountain offering a calm peace to rest from the troubles of the war. The Chinese nationalists were fighting a foe from within, the Communist Party, Aware that his days were numbered, the National Party official wandered the grounds, afraid of what the communists would do to a man like him. The large brick main house stared at him accusingly. He walked down the steps and stood under the stone balcony. Here, he made his decision. Without a word to anyone, he disappeared. Days later, his wife agonized over her missing husband. Was he captured, tortured, and killed by the new government? Did he die in some nearby battle? Or did he, in fact, run away? A coward determined to save his own skin, leaving a frightened wife behind. Her sanity seeped from her soul like water from a broken pot. Around her, she imagined voices taunting her, encouraging her to leave this world. Was the house itself calling out? She finally gave in, too weak to go on anymore, and hanged herself from the rafters. But her story refused to end even then. Still questioning her husband's truth, she wanders the mansion, a faded spirit, ready to invite in anyone who might be him. In 1980, a Chinese mandate required all buildings used for religious purposes prior to 1945 to be handed back to the institutions from which they came. After years of fact-finding, the building was returned to the Catholic Church. But the church lacked the millions needed to restore the mansion, so the Chaune Church sat in ruin. A historic preservation law saved it from destruction. But there are many who claim that supernatural forces are more to thank for saving this church than the preservation mandate. In the late 90s, a trio of construction workers doing repairs on a house next door got drunk and decided to break through the basement walls between the two buildings. They did and walked through the crude passage, never to be seen again. The house claimed three more victims. Rumors circulated that the government, interested in how they could tap into the supernatural, secretly demanded that the house be saved for study. Did the abandoned wife take the three men, hoping to find her lost husband? These were not the first people to go missing. 
There are stories about the British priest who arranged for the building's construction and how he entered the church before it was completed and vanished, never to be seen again. In the crypt, there's a hidden tunnel that leads to a nearby neighborhood. Did the house claim its first victim before it was even finished? Or did the priest escape through the tunnel? If he did, why was he never seen again? In 2014, a movie inspired by and set in the Chowne Church premiered to record opening day box office receipts for a Chinese horror film. The House That Never Dies instantly became a hit with Chinese moviegoers for its touching stories of abandonment woven around horrors, like hands reaching out of a mirror and a bathtub filled with blood. It seemed to strike just the right chord with its intended audience. Before the film's release, the Chinese people seemed to find horror movies uninspiring, but The House That Never Dies changed all that. A race to create quality horror movies in China had begun. The film tells the tale of a woman, her husband and child moving into the mansion at Chowne 81. The husband, a novelist, is working with another woman to get his works published. Our protagonist finds herself alone with her child most of the time as the husband spends more and more time with his female collaborator. Jealousy swirls. The large mansion, empty and foreboding, enhances her feeling of isolation. Her daughter finds a friend, a young girl dressed in red who lives in the basement, and a series of strange and frightening events occur. Then. A series of flashbacks tell another story, from a different time, of a prostitute who falls in love with the son of a rich family who live in the freshly built and beautiful Chowne Mansion. She asks to marry the son and ends up deceived and betrayed, buried alive with one of the other sons who had recently died. The twin tragic tales of love, both contemporary and in the past, enticed Chinese audiences who found a horror movie with heart and compassion one where a tragic ending offered the same tears found in a good production of Romeo and Juliet. And the real-life location of the House of Horror that inspired this film was irresistible to many living in Beijing and even far away. Hundreds of people every day began to visit the dilapidated Shaune Church. A frustrated Catholic diocese had to constantly tell people that no ghosts occupy the building, but they did consent to allow a few dozen in at a time. Another film titled The House That Wouldn't Die came out in 2017. Repeating the common tale of a married woman left alone in the house seemed too much of a rehash of the first film, and trite jump scares explained as dreams or hallucinations didn't go over as well with audiences. There's certainly horror to be generated from Chowne Church, but better storytelling was required to find it. The Chaoyang Men neighborhood where the church is located has become a prosperous area of Beijing, with property values skyrocketing. An old building sitting in poor condition could sell for millions, but the Roman Catholic Archdiocese of Beijing isn't selling. The church claims it hopes to make the Chowne Church serve as the Vatican Embassy, but perhaps the truth is a bit more embarrassing. Every spring, people in Beijing celebrate Tomb Sweeping Festival. It's a day of honoring dead relatives. Graves are swept and cleaned, flowers are laid down, and paper money is burned, an offering for relatives who may need the money in the afterlife. The festival is based on the tale of a servant and a prince in exile. The servant is so loyal to the exiled prince that he made broth from his own leg to feed his master. But when the prince ascends the throne and becomes king, he forgets to thank his faithful selfless servant, who retreats to the mountains. Later, the remorseful king seeks him out, only to find him dead with his mother on his back. It was the prince who began the tomb sweeping festival, honoring his old friend in death, who he had failed to honor in life. Many in Beijing and China as a whole cling to superstitions and traditions like the Tomb Sweeping Festival so devoutly that it is likely difficult to find buyers for a haunted property such as the Chowne Church. Or perhaps the Chinese government hoping to tap into the mansion's secrets chases away potential buyers. It certainly doesn't help that when people walk past the Chowne Church, they often complain of a strong feeling of dread. Several people have claimed to hear the cries of a woman coming from the building, cries that only grow louder during a thunderstorm. And the mansion's doorway always seems cold, even in the heat of summertime, noticeably colder than it is in another shaded entryway just 20 meters away. In the 1960s, the Red Guard, militant youth activists loyal to Mao Zedong, had been housed in the mansion. At some point, they grew terrified of something in the house, something sinister, and fled. The Red Guard were not known to fear much, so this action was noticed by the people. These stories stay strong in the minds of the people of Beijing. Today, the Chowne Church sits abandoned and crumbling while awaiting its fate. 
or possibly waiting for a high-ranking government official to return home to his spectral wife. So what do you think? Has the Chowne Church claimed a series of victims over the decades? What happened to those who disappeared? Were they casualties of a brutal communist regime? Claimed by the ghost of an abandoned wife, desperate to reclaim her lost husband? Or did they fall prey to something demonic that's been at the site all along? Let us know in the comments below. Be sure to like and subscribe to Graveyard Shift. Leave a comment if you're brave enough. And as always, check back next time to find out what else will make it from Scream to Screen.